You know, we have seen Title IX evolve a lot over the last 50 years, from this law that was mostly focused on women and girls' sports to the expansion and evolution into sexual orientation and gender identity. But my question is, what's next? How does Title IX evolve over the next 10 years, especially with the influx of students in our schools who identify with a gender that does not align with their sex assigned at birth? My name is Jessica Heiser. I am the founder of Imprint Legal Group. I have been practicing Title IX law for a dozen years, and I'm also certified by Northwestern University as a diversity, equity, and inclusion practitioner. But maybe most importantly, I'm the parent of a non-binary student. And so I've seen this situation from a variety of perspectives. And I'm starting to wonder how Title IX will evolve and change with our students in the schools who are gender creative, gender fluid, gender non-conforming, non-binary, but essentially a lot of students who fall outside of the binary system, a male bathroom and a female bathroom. And what happens when a student is both a male and a female, and that might change upon the day, or they fall into neither of those categories. Our laws and our schools are set up for the binary systems. So what happens when we get an influx of students who fall outside the binary? I hope you'll join me for this discussion where we dissect a lot of complicated legal things, but also I might just tell you a couple of funny stories that have happened to me as a parent in this space. Hope to see you in Philadelphia.